uh, welcome to Feza Gürsey Center Higher Structure Seminars. And uh, this week, our speaker is Kürşat Sözer from McMaster University. He uh, completed his PhD at Indiana University and uh, under the direction of Professor Turaev. And he will going to discuss his recent uh, research results. So we thank him uh, once again for speaking in our colloquium, uh, in our uh, seminar series. Yes, Kürşat, please. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction and, and the invitation. It's a good pleasure to talk about my recent work, which is joined with Alexey Viredizi, who is at Lille now. And uh, I will talk about mainly two things. One is algebraic side, the other one is topology, it's like cross module graded categories, algebra side, and the states of homotopy invariance of maps, it's topology side. I'm sorry for the unfortunate choice of the title, I guess it doesn't make sense to anybody, but hopefully the goal is to make sense of the title. I mean, if the, if the content of the title makes sense to people, it's, I will say a success for this talk. Okay. Um, yeah, the outline of the talk is like there are six kind of sections and mainly the first four is basically kind of survey on quantum topology, especially in three dimension. And the uh, last two is more technical and the kind of results that involved. So I will go slowly in the first four sections so that uh, things more understandable and soft and kind of survey type. And there in the second two parts, in the last two parts, I will go uh, kind of faster maybe. And if you have any questions, I can answer them. Okay, let me start with functorial quantum, topological quantum field theories. Uh, functorial topological quantum field theories that we also have seen in Ilker's talk, that he mentioned. We have a kind of, since it's kind of functorial, we need to define functor, we need to define two categories. And the first category is the category of cobordisms. To define a TQFT first, we need to define, uh, we need to fix a dimension. For a fixed dimension N, we define uh, n-dimensional cobordism category, which has closed oriented n minus one dimensional manifolds as objects. And, and we're given two such objects, and what is a morphism from one to another is a cobordism, is an oriented cobordism, but to, uh, is an oriented cobordism is, a, is in fact a uh, morphism between two such objects. Well, I will, I will, given notion of what is the source and target, how do we determine the source of target of a cobordism. But we need to take the fair morphism classes of this cobordism, so otherwise the composition, which is gluing these manifolds along common boundaries doesn't make sense. This is kind of Miller's theorem. Uh, to, to have a smooth structure on the glued manifold, we need to consider cobordisms, the fair morphism relative to the boundary. Otherwise, we need to choose more data uh, to, to, to have well-defined composition in the category. Well, then uh, we also have, this, this is just a bare category. And when we consider additionally, taking disjunction and operation on manifolds, because cobordisms are as well kind of manifolds on the objects which just take two and minus one manifolds as a day of disjunction. Similarly, disjunction of manifolds, this, this operation, it keeps the category monoidal category structure. And in fact, this is, there's a braiding, which is just swapping the ends. And it's, it's kind of, um, it's, it's clearly symmetric because it's symmetric in the sense that we don't consider manifolds embedded in a fixed dimension, but we, we roughly consider manifolds embedded in, when we fix them, we consider manifolds embedded in high enough dimension or just abstract, abstract manifolds. Then it, it literally becomes a symmetric, the braiding becomes a symmetric. There is no gradient data, non-triple gradient data. But let me give you some, to make it concrete, let's consider what's going on in n equals two and n equals three. In n equals two, objects are closed oriented one dimensional manifolds, which are basically this union of finite domain circles, like here and like here, and they are oriented. And, uh, and the cobordism between them is just a manifold bounding those. 
but how do we define how do we how do we which you you may ask what is the source of this, this scope or what is target because this is a category in the scope too the source we determine from orientation assume the manifold is given this orientation if you take the orientation and the tangent model of cir circle and the second vector inside interior vector if if this induces uh, if this induces orientation of the manifold the the cobordism manifold then this is the interior if the outgoing man uh, if you take the orientation of the circle and put out uh, next next vector as outward direction vector that induces the orientation of the manifold that's that will be the outgoing the target of the in this case you can see this is this is the source of the thing because when we add interior vector it becomes the orientation of the surface similarly these are the targets outgoing outgoing boundaries similarly in dimension three we have objects are closed surfaces which are chemistry surfaces you can identify them and and similarly source and target make sense in the same way we consider we have an orientation on the boundary when we add interior vector as a last vector it which this, if this orientation this is the orientation of the manifold then it is the source it if we add the orientation to orientation vector to the outgoing vector which induces the orienta orientation of the three manifold then it becomes an outgoing vector. It's, like, it's kind of trying to make sense of what is this category so next uh, the second category that we consider for definition of TQF is the category of vector spaces and I fix to one can take also projective finite finite type uh, projective modules over some computer ring, but I will just stick to the complex numbers as Atiya did in, in this in this initial paper. Like let's go let vect C denote the category of finite dimension complex vector spaces and morphisms are linear transformations. And tensor product of vector spaces makes this category uh, turns this category into a symmetric modular category. And Atiya's definition of functorial TQFT is just saying that an n-dimensional TQFT is just a symmetric model functor from category of cobordisms to category of complex vector spaces. Well, in his in his paper, it's not stated in this way because the language built maybe later, like he, he just puts axioms. Like there are six axioms, if I'm not wrong. I don't know. And like, uh, but these axioms just combine into a uh, definition of a symmetric model functor precisely. So one can also call instead of functorial TQFTs, another uh, another way of saying this is axiomatic TQFTs. There's certain collections of axioms, which are which are just can be packed into to, uh, just saying animation TQFT is a symmetric model functor from coborism category to category of some linear vectors, linear category. Let's see what does such a functor does. In n equals two, we have again such a such an morphism in the category, like we have some ingoing. This is this is the source of the this morphism, and then here it are. Actually, I put arrows wrong. Uh, yeah, I'm arrows wrong. I should change the orientations. Anyway, let's say this is the source. Let's choose choose the orient choose ch change the change the I need to change the orientation of the map. Sorry for that. The, uh, assume this is the source of the target with the, with the opposite orientation. And then this is a target. Then when we apply this functor to this this, this morphism, we get uh, we we get a linear map from V tensor V to V, where V is the image of oriented circle. This is kind of what 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 it does in dimension two. But the one observation, one key observation is this is this fact: when we have this manifold, and when we cut this manifold along some Co-dimension one submanifold, then this becomes precise the composition of two, two, two morphisms, or gluing two cobordisms along the common boundary. But then this morphism that we have that we have defined before, this is precise this composition. Just 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 standard uh, category theoretical idea because we have a we have a map which splits into this composition and it's diagonal that into commutes. So what I, the point is. These TQFTs, if let's say these TQFTs provide some invariance of manifolds, and then these invariance of manifolds are priori, they should behave well under cut and paste operations. Because then if this Z sigma is an invariant of 
some quantum invariant of the surface, whatever it is, some TQFD invariant of this, then we know if we don't know this, if we cannot compute this thing, what is the point is, if you know the simpler, the, the sim invariance of simpler, simpler pieces, then we can just obtain this one, just, but just taking, uh, just composing this, this invariance. So maybe the slogan is this TQFT invariance, TQFT data kind of behaves well under cooling of manifolds. So that's one of the important thing. And in topology, cut and paste operations are, are one of the key operations. And the other remark I want to make is, let's consider closed surface in n dimension T or in general, just closed n-dimensional manifolds. This is again, okay, pay attention. This is not an object, but a morphism, closed n manifold. It's a morphism from empty n minus one manifold, empty closed oriented n minus one manifold to another empty manifold. But since it's a symmetric monoidal, this empty manifold is, an, is the unit object in, uh, is the unit object in this union uh, under operation this union and it's map it's it's quite mapped the unit object of tensor product which is just complex numbers. So in particular closed n manifold under such a functor it's just a linear map from C to C. But the linear map from C to C is precisely determined the image of one just by linearity. So in particular we, we don't consider this map but just the image of one which is just number just complex number. And this is the number that we associate to this closed surface or closed n manifold. So maybe in short, it's like TQFD, a functorial TQFD, n dimensional functorial TQFD, mm -hmm. assigns a numerical invariant to closed n manifold. And this numerical invariant can be computed with maybe cut and paste operations if you know the if you know the nature of TQFD. And the other thing is, if you take two distribution of two closed n manifolds, the associated invariant is just multiplicative, uh, just multiplication of the uh, uh, each each piece. So this is this is kind of summary of what I've said so far. It's like uh, maybe uh, just say it again and move on. What what I said so far is n dimensional TQFT is a functor from cobordism, systematic model functor from Coporism category to vector spaces. And such n dimension together produce numerical invariants of closed n manifolds. And these invariants, the invariants are multiplicated with respect to this union operation. And these invariants also behave well under cut and paste operations. So cut and paste, and then uh, in terms of there's kind of maybe some computational risk aspect of this. Thing. Well, next, I will move on to homotopic quantum field theories. And uh, hopefully I will make sense what is homotopy. Because in the case of TQFDs, uh, I don't know about the physics side, but the idea is there's this quantum field theory and TQFD is basically the simplest version of quantum field theories where the underlying space-time, the cobordism, the associated, uh, the associated physical invariant to this uh, manifold, physicists just say, let's consider the simplest case the associated invariance in the space-time to some operators just depends on the underlying TQFT, the underlying topology of the space. Nothing else. There is no metric, nothing else. That's, that's why it's called topological quantum field theory. And in fact, this is kind of the simplest version of QFT. To, to see that maybe, I guess the motivation is just to see that the idea of QFT works. And we will see it works quite well, even in the simplest case, in the, they, they also call baby version of QFT. Well, anyway, in the homotopic quantum field theory, we will see where does the word homotopy enters. Let's see. In the world of homotopy quantum field theory, we replace cobordism category with some what is called X cop. Before we had cop, now we have X cop. What is X cop? We first fix a connected pointed CW complex. It's, a, it's just a connected CW complex with a base point. And defined as X cop as before, objects are closed oriented n minus one manifold, but I keep it a point. It, 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 it may not necessarily connect it, but if, it, if it's not connected, each connected component will require to be point. And then plus uh, we require to, we have a pointed close oriented n minus one manifold, and plus we need to require additional uh, continuous map 
from this manifold to X. This, 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 man, this, this, man, uh, this pointed continuous maps defined from cobord, the, uh, this pointed manifolds to X. And the, again, cobordisms are, I mean, morphisms are different class of cobordisms, but now they are equipped with homotopy class of maps to the X, which restrict to the, this continuous map on the boundary. I mean, if this is too abstract, that's just, again, any, and in the case of n equals two, let's consider this case uh, and try to make sense of what I said. We have such a such an object in the COP two, but now in the boundary we have pointed manifolds. Plus, in addition to these manifolds on the boundary, the objects, we have some continuous maps from these pointed manifolds to this fixed target space. Again, in the source. And in the target, we have pointed closed manifolds, in this case, pointed circles, equipped with some continuous maps, continuous pointed maps. And in this case, when we have a cobordism, we require we require those, we look at those maps which extend G1 and G2 to all cobordisms. And among those maps, we just consider we put we impose homotopy condition. We define homotopy of those maps, and then we consider homotopy class of such maps. But that's kind of the Motivation for the homotopy. The cobordisms come equipped with homotopy class of maps. And the objects come equipped with objects become pointed manifolds plus pointed homotopy class or pointed continuous maps. And try I've generalized the, the definite Atias definition of TQFT to HQFTs, like when we fix this target space X, try to define the n dimensional X HQFT or HQFT with target X. Is a symmetric monoidal functor from this x band that we define to category vector space, context vector spaces. Like I said, this generalizes TQFT. How does it? The, the question is, how does it generalize? Uh, if we choose just the target space's point, or more general, just a contractible space, then the, the notion of uh, XHQFT is just HQFT because we just we just have continuous maps. Just, just, just maps to point. There is no, no more additional data. On the other hand, for any target space X, we can embed this cobordism category to X cobordism category by just this is not canonical, but for any closed n n minus one manifold here, we just introduce points on the connected components and then consider constant maps. So this 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 just implies that this category is very larger than this issued category we have because we equip it maps. And also the points to the manifold. And another point is when the target is a spherical target, that, that means when X is KG1 space for some discrete group G, then there's a, there's in the target there is no first K invariant or second second K invariant, se second homotopic group. So instead of continuous maps, one can just replace the continuous maps on the objects just by homotopic class of maps. That's just for convenience, it just makes it makes things easier. Because we just kind of reduce the category coherently to just uh, homotopy class of maps on objects. Well, let's see what type of what does this functor does. Again, when we have such DQFT, in this case we assign some vector spaces to this such circles, this union of pointed circles like with maps. But as you see, this vector space is now not necessarily the same. Before they were the same because basically all close connected oriented one manifolds just circles. But in this case, since they they are equipped with maps, so we can change the maps so they, they are prior, they are not they are different. They can be different. This kind of a in some sense is a richer structure. And also when we have again closed and manifold, this is just equipped with some homotopic class of map to X. And this also produces um, just uh, numerical invariants. Before, in the TQFT case, we have a numerical invariant, which is just assigned to closed and manifold. In this case, we assign numerical invariant to closed and manifold, equipped with some homotopy class of map to this fixed target. In particular, we can just fix the underlying manifold, but we can change the homotopy class of map, but we can produce some different maps, different invariants. So the point is, 
TQFD produces invariants of closed and manifolds and dimension TQFD, depending on this invariant. In this, but HQFD, it, in fact, produces invariants of maps to this fixed target space, uh, homotopy invariants of maps. So, and uh, if the target space is something like classifying space, for example, and we know of homotopy class of maps, the classifying spaces are precisely on top correspondence with some structures, the, the corresponding structures on your manifold. So this is this this HQFT can be used to detect this these structures, to distinguish the structures, especially like in the in the case of this just axis classifying space of of some of some group. Well, just one concrete example about HQFTs. In any dimension, try to produce the, this cohomological HQFTs. Then after we fix X, the target space of HQFT, for any N cohomology class of this uh, of this target space, uh, try to produce the uh, uh, cohomological HQFT. In terms of vector spaces assigned to manifold, they're just one dimensional vector spaces. And they, they come from the co-cycle representatives of this of this class. Uh, there, that the point is that yeah, for connected manifolds, they are just one-dimensional uh, complex vector spaces, the associated vector spaces. But when we have closed three manifold, this is kind of my very vague, maybe nonsense imagination of three manifolds. Like there are some superior, some some embedded surfaces. Then we have closed three manifolds. Let's say, and then we have a three three co-cycle of X. Then this cohomological HQFD is precisely the evaluation of fundamental class at the pullback of this cohomology class. That's that this is the result of trial. It's like evaluation of pullback at the fundamental class. This is a priori can be computed in terms of using HQFDs. And this is this is for every dimension that you can use. This is kind of the summary of this part. Like again, before we had invariant numerical invariance of manifolds. Now we have numerical invariance of homotopy class of maps to fix target. Next, um, I want to give some uh, some results on quantum topology in three dimension. In dimension three, there are two important and main constructions of TQFTs. One is state sum which were first introduced by tri Bureau using representations of UQSL2. And then they, which are generalized later by Barrett and Westbury to spherical fusion categories. And here the idea is for close three manifolds, we will assign some number to set TQFT. And this number is basically uh, kind of using representation of UQSL2, we assign for each, we, we choose a triangulation and to, to, to triangulate using representations of, of the object or the objects of fusion categories, we assign some uh, some state. And then there are finite domain states because of some finite is condition on these categories or choose of roots of unity here. And uh, we sum over all these finite domain states, it's just adding up numbers. And then this is this is the rough idea. And then I will talk about this later in the, at the end of the talk. How does it work? And the second TQFD, the first one is state sum, the other one is surgery, which were which is the for this TQFD, the main motivation is Witten's work on uh, on Feynman path integral and uh, monotromies on uh, Wilson lines and different things. And, and then Rescheling and Triev make this mathematically more precise, the Witten's idea so on this TQFD. And they use uh, representation of quasi triangular Hopf algebras, or now these are again packed into modular tensor categories or modular class, algebraic structures, modular tensor categories. And in this case, like since the ideas come from physics, there is not much difference. Well, well the method is different, but we, we choose a surge representation of manifold. And then we assign from this again representation, representations of quasi of triangular Hopf algebras, we assign some coloring. Uh, and then we sum over all colors. This is like, again, we sum over all states, sum over all coloring. This is like the idea of, I don't know, underlying physics. 
well, this, this is not the whole story. These two TQFDs, in fact, are related in the sense that they, I should also add here uh, Kevin Walker and some other people. Yeah, Triave and Relizier, they just show the relation between these two TQFDs. Let's say the first one is tau TB, Triave Viro, and tau Reshiting Triave. Then when, whenever we have a spherical fusion category C, its center is modular tensor category. Then for any spherical fusion category, we have a triavero TQFD. But when we take the center, it becomes a modular tensor category. And then in this case, the associated with the resting triad invariant is the same as in this case, up to, up to some cost, or just double. But uh, this, this is the kind of idea. The slogan becomes like surgery TQFD is the center of state sum. This is kind of one of the slogans. But, uh, but this theorem is. Uh, it's, it's not stable, it's quite involved because the, the Dirnfeld center is not simple to understand. Well, anyway, and these are what I said so far. This, this is the result of TQFDs in, in three dimensions. And try and really see it generalize all of these results uh, that, what I, that I said in, in the present in this, in this slide to HQFDs, three dimensional HQFDs with KG1 targets. They generalize the state sum, TQFD to XHQFD when X is KG1. And in this case, the triangulation uses some, uh, triangulation uses states, but these states are assigned which, uh, in, to be coherent with the homotopy class of a map, the manifold circuit. And similarly, uh, surgery HQFD, surgery TQFD, this, this should be HQFD. Uh, surgery TQFD is generalized to, uh, surgery HQFD using modular G tensor categories and here using spherical G fusion categories. And similarly here, there's a kind of additional coherent result, coherence between homotopy class of maps on the manifolds and the colorings assigned. And again, they generalize this, com the relation between them. I say this generalized because if you take G equals to G's trivial group, then this becomes a point, it's just a contractible space. And this is just the whole of the results just reduces the TQFD case. That's why I call this a generalization. For a trivial group, all of the all of these results just reduces the TQFD results. Well, now I go a little bit in different direction. Uh, I will talk about homotopy uh, n types. Uh, and homotopy n type is a topological space whose homotopy groups higher than n all vanish. And in this respect, one types are precisely KG1 spaces just by definition of KG1. The first one, the fundamental group of the space, the KG1 space is a, is a space whose fundamental group is G and all other homotopy groups are vanishes, vanish. And, uh, and this can be restated like groups because these are just discrete groups. Discrete groups model homotopy one types. And McLean and Whitehead proved cross modules model homotopy two types. I will explain what does it mean. But first, let me tell you what is cross module. Cross module is a group homomorphism where the, the second group acts on the first group, and second group acts on itself by conjugation, such that this group homomorphism is equivariant. So we denote the action of H on E like this, and the equivariance can be stated like this in this way. There's EH. H act on E and H act on H in separate conjugation, and we require this back to the conjugation. And the second condition is the P for identity. It's like chi E is an element of H, which acts on E prime, and it's equal to this. From here, you can see if chi E, if E is in kernel of this thing, then it commutes with everything. Because if it's in kernel, this is one, but then we can just put this here. So this condition just implies that kernel of this map is just central. Well, here, what I say, this groups model homotopy one type, we have these two constructions. For any group, we have a classifying space. And for any KG, for any KG1 space, we have fundamental, fundamental uh, group point construction. Uh, these are kind of homotopy inverse to each other, kind of uh, some up to, up, to, up to homotopy or up to some equivalence. And similarly here, what does cross modules model homotopy two types? 
proteins. It means that for any homotopy two type, there exists a cross module such that there is this again, as before, there's a classifying space of a group. Now we have a classifying space of a cross module such that for any homotopy two type, there exists a cross module such that X is homotopy equal to uh, classifying space of this cross module. Well, how does cross module relate to X? We know X has just three data. One is because it's, I consider connected homotopy two types. I did not like connected, but here X has three data. The first one is fundamental group. Second one is second, hom second homotopy group. And third one is the first game variant. And here you can see the first, uh, the, the, uh, the, the fundamental group of X is precisely co-kernel of this map. Of the, of the cross module. Like you can see, this, this cross module is complete algebraic definition, but you can see the topology inside it. Now you have a cross module, it's co kernel, it's pi one of the associated space, e chi, and its kernel is just the, its kernel is the pi two of the space. That's, that's the, that's algebraic and topology. It's like in, 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 in kind of two dimensional implication, kind of homotopy two types. Well, why I start to talk about homotopy theories because I mean uh, homotopy n types because we asked with with Virilzie with Alexi this question can we generalize try Virilzie results from one types target to two type types because what I said one types are kg one spaces and I also said in three dimension try and Virilzie generalize all of the results uh, of TQFTs to kg one targets. HQFTs. So they 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 generalize all of the TQFT results to one target, uh, one type target HQFTs, and then we ask can we generalize even to two type targets, which are related to cross modules. And the answer is yes. For the first TQFT, that's that's what we did. Given a cross module, then any spherical chi fusion category gives rise to three dimensional say some HQFT with target B chi. The classifying space of the cross module. This is kind of the first layer of this three three theorems. Uh, that's 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 the whole that's kind of the uh, the this talk is about and, and our work is about this construction of this TQFT. Well, I haven't. I told you several times modular tensor categories, spherical fusion categories, spherical chi, chi fusion category, but I never told about them. Yeah, uh, hopefully now I will. I will start telling some some stuff about those a fusion category or something like this, because uh, yeah, I want to make it more motivational and survey type with the person and then give the details. I don't assume people know what is a spherical fusion category. I will, I will talk about this hopefully. And yeah, the spherical fusion category I will talk about later. Now and this general this precise this there's also yet another generalization of this TQFT or HQFT KG one case because if we choose this cross module map to be identity map, then this is just TQFT because co-kernel is one and kernel is one. So it's just the, the B chi will be contractible space. And the same way, if we consider this cross module map to be embedding of E into H, E is in particular, E is normal subgroup of H, where H just H acts on a E by conjugation. Then, then this, our construction is just equal to Try this year work and state sum with uh, k g one, but g now is co kernel because there is no pi two. Just in, in this specific choices, we recover the early results in the systems. Well, again, uh, maybe it's another plus motivation for the for the talk. Then we have the close three manifolds because we we build a three 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 dimension HPFT. Then we given a spherical chi fusion category. We don't know what it is. Then for any pair where M is a closed three manifold and G is a homotopy class of map to close by space of big chi, then we associate this closed three manifold with such a homotopy class, some number. And this number is, is, is again the same as, as, as I said in the beginning. This closed manifold induces a map from complex numbers to complex number, but this linear map is determined very precisely where the image of one goes. And that will this number is the number that I'm going to explain at the end of the talk. I have time. Yeah, this is the kind of the first end of first four parts. Uh, 
and the move and the statement of the theorem hopefully uh, statement makes sense uh, yeah I told you I skipped over spherical fusion categories now let me tell you what they are uh, a monoidal category is called C linear if all of the home spaces are complex vector spaces and the composition and tensor product are just bilinear. Like a, you should have in your mind maybe just category vector spaces. Simplest example. And in this case, the object is called simple if endomorphism of the space is just isomorphic to C, rank one vector space. An additional structure, yes, this, this, this. In this in this quantum algebra world, and we define spherical fusion categories, pivotal categories, I don't know, modular tensor categories, everything packed into one package. So definitions involve all of structures. Sorry about that. But a category, a monoidal category is called rigid. It's rigid is a structure. That means this category is every object comes equipped with some left and right duality. Like for any object in the category, we have some object which is called left dual. And similarly, right dual, some evaluation map which is non-degenerate, because this is some C linear. This is map in C, and then this precise non-degenerate so pairing in complex vector space and its dual. That I, I will make sense. And a fusion category in this case is a rigid monoidal category, rigid monoid C linear category. We have a we have a monoidal category. Object morphisms are just complex vector spaces, and for any object we have left and right duals such that there exists only finitely many simple objects. And the unit object of the category belongs to this finitely many simple object. It's, the unit object is simple and belongs to this, this finite set. And if we have two different simple objects, there is no homomorphism between them. And every object is a direct sum of these this things. So this finite set of simple objects are in, in particular just a building block of the category under direct sums. A tensor product. Well, what is an example of spherical uh, fusion categories? Are uh, representations of finite groups, representations of quantum groups. And what is, you may ask, what is this I in this case in the category of representations? They're just ir irreducible representations. Irreducible representations are simple objects because there is no other morphism, there's no equivalent morphism other than complex numbers. Uh, and also, there is some trivial example for a given finite group. We can consider objects, which is elements of G and morphisms, uh, just chronicle delta. Yeah, anyway. But for such categories, we have a very useful tool of graphical calculus that we can represent morphisms in the category by just, uh, by just some diagrams. And this works quite well. Like the language is like the strand is just an identity morphism. And for any morphism, it's still like this. Composition is just stacking two things up and then taking monoidal product, uh, just take, 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 taking tensor product, just like this. And these are, in particular, is invariant under planar isotopies. We can, this, this tensor product is equivalent to this, these two. We can put F tensor identity of U, the composition identity Y tensor Y, and this is equivalent to. So this graphical calculus is very useful because we can represent any morphism like this. And also we can, we can do such simplifications. And when we have unital object, we just don't put anything. A unital object is kind of, we don't see them. And the rigidity conditions is precisely this. We have evaluations and co-evaluations and left rigidity condition. No, yeah, these, these two are, the, this F, in the definition of rigid categories, this, there's a condition on this, then this condition is precisely this. And we have pivotal categories, which are, in this case, pivotal categories. We don't have left and right duals, but they are the same thing. And in this case, we have this evolution correlation. They are not different for things, but in particular, we have our graphical calculus enriches by just putting arrows. Instead of dual, we just put the opposite orientation. And this becomes the left and right dual conditions. And then a spherical is just these two morphisms to be equal for any endomorphism of F. Uh, sorry, it's, uh, 
I'm imposing so many, so many definitions at the same time. That's, uh, but yeah, uh, maybe maybe in short, for such linear monoid categories, we have graphical calculus where we can represent objects. We can represent morphism in the category just on diagrams, and this is very useful to do computations. And this pivotal and pivotal is uh, some structure, and it's very called as a conditional pivotal structure. Like yeah. now, next, I will not go over this slide much. This is the key algebraic tool that we had in our in our in our theorem that chi grade is spherical fusion category. Maybe I, I will not take the slide because I know it doesn't make sense to anybody. It's just but the point is this: we have a monoid category. We have a uh, when we have a cross module chi e to h, we have a grading on objects, and this grading is h grading, and we have a grading on the morphisms, and these gradings come from e, and then we have a morphism from different objects, and they are, they respect this chi morphism. That's that's the key idea behind this. Objects are graded by h, and morphisms are graded by e. And then we have morphisms between different edge gradings. They're they're exactly related to this related to this cross module. That's that's the idea. I will I will skip this. And we have uh, some additional condition on ESM simplicity, but there's not much difference. We have again some finite many simple objects and a finite many isomorphic class of simple objects for every edge. Awesome. Some, uh, some some kind of examples, but we can go with this. Yeah. Now, this is the title of the talk. I just want to make sure I just make sense of the first part. Uh, I told you what is cross module grade category. It's kind of a it's, it's a monoid category. It's a linear monoid category. There are simple objects, but the point is, objects of this category are graded by H, and morphisms are graded by E, and the morphisms. From one one edge graded morphism to another edge prime are precisely indexed by this cross module. That's, that's the whole idea of this category. It's just a monoid category, which is linear and there are simple objects, and and there's a grading on objects and morphisms. That's that's kind of what I what I expect to. Um, Kurshad, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, could you show this previous two slides one more time? Yeah. Uh, is this uh, graded categories you defined? Does it what does it mean for when you look at the representations, just the representations? Uh, your example. Oh. Uh, yes, this this example this example is just uh, linearization of two group associated to cross module. Cross modules are the can be also stated by two groups. This is just a two group associated uh, associated to chi objects element all, uh, objects of this category is H and the morphisms are just E relating these two and we just linearize it. the first example but from the perspective of representation the representations now that's the current work we are working we introduce hop chi coalgebras hmm. it's kind of a generalization of hope G algebra such that representations of this whole algebra produces chi graded monoid categories. Yeah, that, that's a great question, and that that's that's the project we are currently working on. Okay, okay. we Thank introduced you. Hope, Hope chi algebra whose representations are chi monoid categories. Nice. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Next, uh, I hope I. I I made some point in the algebraic side of this thing. Now, hopefully, I will tell what is this numerical invariant that we assign to three man, close three manifold and the homotopy class of map to B chi. Now, we take an oriented uh, we take we take a triangulation of a close three manifold. We have a close oriented three manifold and a homotopy class of a map. Next. We have a we choose an orientation of M such that the, this two skeleton of this orientation that assert that the faces, two faces are oriented. That's the condition. 
We choose a triangulation synthesis, and we require we just choose an orientation, which I mean, the, the triangulation comes equipped with orientation on two bases. And next, we encode this homotopy class of map data by labeling the this, this triangulation. In fact, it's just two skeletons. That's that's the whole idea. Differs from TQFD case. We put this G data onto triangulation, and then we put uh, we do rest of the things, traditional things, coloring states, say some things, just doing coherently with respect to this 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 table. Because we want to we want to get invariant of G, we we need to put um, we need to impose this condition of G on the manifold very well. Let's say we have this triangulation whose two faces are oriented, then on each three simplices in the center, we choose a point. These are red points. And then we choose, we choose dual, dual edges to each two faces. Since each two faces is oriented and the manifold is oriented, these, these dual edges can be oriented. Because we, we just take the orientation of the face plus the orientation of the uh, the chosen orientation of this thing to be induced the orientation of the underlying manifold. That's the idea. And then we we have a G. We choose a representative of this G such that it maps this point to base point of B chi. We can always do choose such a representation representative. And then when we choose when we choose G such that it maps this points in the centers of three synthesis to base point on B chi. This image of these things becomes a loop in B chi. And these loops, this, 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 this thing can be labeled by H, elements of H. And in fact, this, this thing, as you see here, this is associated with this blue edge. This, in fact, becomes a disk here. And its image is a disk on B chi, which bounds this thing. So we do such labeling such that this chi e is this labeling. This is exactly the way of viewing how cross modules encode homotopy type of two two homotopy type of three manifold. We have kind of we have some loops in B chi, and then when we go over some of them, it bounds some two disks that is E. That that is precisely the geometric idea of how do we encode this G. And here there's also some group, but the point is. All such labelings up to some equivalence relation is equivalent to homotopy class of maps to from M to B chi. This is the one of the key terms. Once we know this, and then once we fix the chi labeling, which encodes G, we do the usual stuff. We, we encode the coloring of a map, which maps each oriented two face to simple objects. But this this is required to be this con satisfy this condition. That means all face R, it should be it should have this. Alpha R, like this H H copy. This this set of collection of maps is in, also in the objects objects of the category are uh, di, um, are graded by H. So it should correspond to this H. So we assign such modules to every H, and then we take tensor product over all edges, all oriented edges, and then we call it duality. Like, uh, yeah, I have better go faster because um, yeah. When when we choose an H, we assign this this module, which is from unit object, to this colored things on the on the on the way that the orientation in this form, in this form exactly the orientation of this this H. And uh, yeah, we go like this, but this is. The same orientation induced by R1, but opposite with R2. So that's why we get negative one here, negative one here, and one here. But then we use the sphericality that if you have a spherical fusion category, then we have then we don't necessarily have more graphical calculus on plane, but in fact graphical calculus on sphere. Because spherical condition was this, and this is precisely moving this arc to here. So when we have a spherical fusion category, we don't do graphical, we don't necessarily do graphical calculus on plane, but on sphere. Next, uh, I know, I mean, I'm, uh, sorry, I, I, maybe I, I give so much details. But next, after, after assigning these things to edges, 
this perspective space to digest, next we go to vertices. And each vertex, we choose a sphere, its boundary gives this graph, but the graph in this boundary is just intersection of the faces. This, this graph is a graph on sphere, but this can be interpreted precisely some morphism in the category because the spherical fusion category. And then there is whole assignment. This, these modules are precisely due to these, these morphisms. And when we evaluate them, we get just some constant for each color. We assign some modules, some vector spaces to edges. And for every vertex, we get some dual on this on these assignments, on these vector spaces. This, this collection is precisely the dual of this, what is assigned to edges. We just use duality between edges and vertices. And then we get we get number for each coloring. And then next, when we add up these all these numbers, because there are finitely many regions, there are finitely many simple objects. So all colorings are just finite. And add this up, we get some, some number up to some coefficient. And the claim is this thing is independent of triangulation itself and the choice of these uh, simple objects. Sorry, I, last part is definitely uh, super fast and so little about that. that Okay. Yeah, that's that's what I want to say. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, Kurshart. Let's thank. <laughs> so, uh, any questions or comments? I didn't understand everything, but uh, I was uh, just curious. Do you have this version of this theorem with the center? for this one as well? No, no. We, don't. we are we are far from that. Why is I it mean, so? We have, uh, I mean, that, that center construction, because we introduced this chi grade model categories. The thing is, we have some projects that we want to do, like, uh, but, but exactly, the pro we have this program, hopefully, like state sum, surgery, and relating these two, doing the same thing, that's the goal. But uh, we haven't started the surgery yet. Uh, we do some algebraic work now. And also in the case of surgery, uh, there is this braiding case, even in the G-crossing case in the braiding, I may encode the braiding in the G-crossing, the, the algebraic structure becomes, I mean, there, there are G-crossed braided fusion categories. That algebraic structure is kind of understandable, but at the moment we don't have a proper generalization of the braiding or definition of a braided chi, mod chi grade model category. Yeah, I mean we first need to find we need, we need to first need to come like come come up come up with definition of chi modular chi tensor categories, right? That will be chi um, braided. And braided fusion chi category, something like this. That will be braiding. The braiding will encode the chi, and it will encode the topology behind three manifold. And then we need to define surgery TQFT, and then we need to define also center of a spherical chi fusion category, which we should produce a priori uh, chi braided fusion category, something like this. Yeah, it's it's a long way to be honest. Yeah, and, yeah, I see. I see. And, and this and this drifted center. I mean, we already see Alexis is, 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 is expert in the field. Of, I don't know much, but the field center is always complicated to me. Mm -hmm. Just the, the category of half, uh, half braidings. And, okay. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Emre has a question, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have a question about uh, fusion categories. Mm -hmm. If the home set uh, wasn't uh, C vector space, I guess uh, here spatial algebra. It. If there are a C algebra, for example, how mm -hmm. would we characterize, uh, define this category, and what would be its related to cross module in your work? That's a good question. I mean, I guess. Case of... uh, not. Uh, 
cross module of groups uh, than uh, gruboids, I guess. Cross module? In the case of star, star. I mean, there are works that I'm, that I know, like fusion categories, like unitary fusion categories. But I don't know, is that what you want to say? Uh, like instead, of, instead of complex numbers, there are kind of more general un unitary fusion mm -hmm. test categories. But for those, we haven't have the definition. We don't have unitary chi fusion categories. We didn't, we didn't define them, but there are works on unitary fusion categories there. There's also some involution in the category. On other level. I don't, I don't know, did I answer the question? Uh, okay, thanks. Uh, I guess uh, algebra For the group, of... case, Groupoid case, I don't know. We, what we have... I think what, this what is a groupoid case, but... Uh... I mean, the, 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 the main example we have for chi grade monolithic category comes from two group. But, but still, the thing is, we still have fusion category. We don't have fusion two categories. There are also notion of fusion two categories, which are two categories. The definition more complicated. Uh, like there, there, there are fusion two categories. There are notion of simplicity, same simplicity. Uh, but, uh, but what we do is more simpler. Still one dimensional categories. We still have one dimensional monolith category. Can I ask a question? So it's about the first part. So, mm -hmm. for example, we know that if we have a two-dimensional TQFD theory that is equivalent to uh, the category of Frobenius algebras, mm -hmm. right? So yes, competitive, competitive Frobenius algebras. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, instead of TQFD, if we consider HQFD two-dimensional or in the lower dimensional case, do we have yes. such? equivalences yes yes to, uh there is this yeah <clears throat> yeah that's a, that's a very good question uh in two dimensional case when the target is not necessarily cross module but any two type try and uh, uh i think it's the opponent of the try get try and uh that try and uh Anyway, uh, try with some quote quarter. They have a work on if the paper name is remarks on two dimensional TKTs. They have uh, uh, they have classification of such things, sort of classifications by uh, Frobenius A algebras, something like this. Like pi, I mean, they have pi one, pi two, and k one invariant. Mm -hmm. And this is one approach. The other approach is formal homotopy quantum field theories. Uh, with Tim Porter and Triad, they have paper on formal quantum field theories where they use cross-module for Venus algebras. Mm -hmm. And in addition to this, maybe advertisement, I did in my thesis extension of two-dimensional TFTs, and I extended G two-dimensional HQFTs in KG1. And uh, I have a work uh, on my own, which I couldn't finish still. A long time. It's it's an extension of this work to uh, two types again, okay. generalizing triads, triads and score to work to extend it two dimensional TQFD, HQFDs with two type targets. Mm -hmm. But it's it's not out there yet. And I, I mean, because in, in the extended case, I'm 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 working on such such TQFDs. Very thank you. Zero, zero one two. Ah. One, one for, for three dimensional case. Not much is known, I guess, right? Even in the TQFT case. In the cross module case? Uh, so, three dimensional uh, topological quantum field theory category of that, what they are equivalent, for example. I guess I have seen some paper by Lurie about uh, n dimensional TQFT, what I mean. N cross I mean, module. Lurie, Lurie's. Lurie's... Uh, Lurie's, pa Lurie's paper with Coborism hypothesis? On TQFT, as far as yeah, I remember. Yeah, on TQFT, yeah. yeah. He has this big, very big conjecture. 
uh, comparison hypothesis uh, it's about classification of TQFDs, mm -hmm. full extended TQFDs. But the point is, uh, full extension is, is, is quite a bit of involved, I mean, hard job. I mean, I mean, for example, this states some TQFDs, they extend to point, they extend to full extent. Uh, uh, I mean, Douglas, uh, Schumer, Peace, and Snyder, they have work on, they compute, they consider three, three, three categories of tensor categories and they consider homotopy fixed points. And that's exactly what does, I mean, full dualizable objects, sorry. And that's exactly what does Nuri says in his paper. I mean, his, his reformulation of cobordism hypothesis of bias and Dolan, it says n-dimensional full extended TQFDs are in bijection or homotopy, the space of n-dimensional Full extent TQFTs just in correspondence or homotopy call the space of full dualizable objects. So they compute in the case of three dimensional case, they compute homotopy fixed uh, full dualizable objects in this three category of ten fusion categories. There they say they put some category and then they 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 come up with some full dualizable objects, then they say this generalizes to this 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 object extends to state sum. But in the case of the surgery one, as far as I know, there is no completely full, full, fully completely written extension to point. This surgery TQF extends to circle, and the slogan is one two they call one two three TQFT. The, the, the slogan is circle. What is assigned to circle is a modular tensor category. But extending the circle is extending the point. It's a big question because, I mean, I don't know. And also the other thing is not all TQFTs extend to point. In general, the state some state sums extend, but uh, not not all of them. So, any more questions or comments? I have one more question, but this. Just uh, something about this uh, cobordism. Uh, when you have BG, uh, mm -hmm. cobordism over BG is, I guess, G covariant cobordism, right? Am I thinking? Yes, yes. G, G covariant, there are two, two, mm -hmm. two equivariants. See, one is manifolds equipped with principal G bundles. That's mm -hmm. what we consider. That's what I say, G covariant. But there are also G covariant that other people talk, especially in optimization algebraic they, they say G equivalent TQFTs where manifolds equip with G actions. Okay. If, if the so, action is free, they're equivalent. But what they do is sort of more general. Is there a similar interpretation for this uh, cobordism over B uh, XI? Like for uh, three or two type, how should we interpret this in terms of manifolds with? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. I, I, I thought about this and John Bias, one of his paper, he has some co comments on, like maybe the, the question that I asked, maybe parallel to what you said is, mm -hmm. what does this BKI classify for? Mm -hmm. Is yeah. it classifying? I mean, John, John Bias and Tim Porter, they have some comments, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I don't know much. Okay. Like, do they, do they classify, like what sort of maybe, uh, Curvatures, maybe. I see. So, I mean, but but I, uh, but I, what was it? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good topology question, but I don't have an answer. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so maybe we thank your shot once more. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I am now stopping the recording.